their faith arrives In spite of what I see, Lord, I believe And help my unbelief, I choose to trust you No matter what I feel, let faith arise Let faith arise For my champion's not dead He is alive Oh, and he already knows my every need Surely he will come and rescue me
good is it to be in the house of the Lord? Amen? Come on. I just want to tell you one word from his mouth can change a lot. Amen? Come on. Just as we sing this, we are. Creation knows the voice that's spoken to the void. The breath that brought the dust to life and sang the stars to fall. The darkness fears your voice. Drove it back before, oh. And though the night is long, I know your light will drive it back and more. Amen. Come on, sing it out. Sing one word from you, and things change on your authority. your prayer. Come on. My fight is not my own. Its end is in your hands. Oh. I worship you because I know all things. Let's bow to your
Amen. Well, again, welcome to the Bridge Central Coast. We're going to keep worshiping. How many know it's not just songs we're singing, amen? It's His truth. Um, and if you guys can, if you guys can move in, just so people standing in the back, if they can do that, and any ushers, if we can put out some more seats, that would be rad too. But we love you guys. Introduce yourself to somebody. Say hi. Give somebody a hug. And Bridge Juniors, if you guys can come to the, the front, that would be awesome. Come on. Well, again, you guys, we're so glad that you're here. We say it every week. It's not by chance that you're here, but it's by God's divine purpose. And so, again, we're just we're excited for what God has in store today. Um, here at the bridge, we have three heartbeats. We believe that we're called to be a bridge that connects people to Jesus, not just on Sunday mornings, but every moment of our lives, on our campuses, in our workplace, everywhere, amen? Um, we feel called to be a bridge that connects the generations young and old, so that's awesome. That means if you have a walker in here, or one of those cool scooters, or if you're 10 years old, God has a plan, amen? amen. So I, I believe that. Until, until we go see Jesus face to face, He still has a plan and a purpose for your life and wants to use you, amen? Um, and last, we feel called to be a bridge of unity to the region. And that just means that we want to choose to speak life over every single person that God puts in our path, even those who are throwing stones and hating on us. Amen. Um, so again, we just, we're so glad that you guys are here. If you can, um, we've got a ton of kids already in there, but again, we believe, we want the next generation to grow up knowing not just about God, but knowing Him. Amen. And so if you can, extend your hands. We're going to pray and bless these guys. God, thank you so much for these young people. Jesus, God, I pray, Holy Spirit, God, may they know your voice from a young age. God, may they not just sing songs or hear messages, God, but they, may they walk in boldness and supernatural confidence, God, knowing, God, that they are your children, God, that you, Jesus, died on the cross for them, God, but rose from the grave. And it says now in your word that you, your spirit lives in them, God. And so I pray, may they know your voice, God. May they know you, God. May they be fire starters, God, front line. Jesus, God, against the enemy. God, may they be world changers in you. I pray, open up their hearts right now, God. Write your word upon their hearts. God, be with their teachers. Give them strength right now. God, in endurance, God, I thank you for them laying down their lives to pour into the next generation. God, we believe, God, that you are gonna rise up a generation, God, who is passionately in love with you, warriors for you. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Come on, love you guys, have fun. We're gonna to continue to worship. Um, if you have any, I can't see in the back if anybody's still standing, but if you have a seat next to you that you can just raise your hand, um, amen. If you guys are standing in the back, there's a couple seats still there. Um, you might have to like share a cheek with somebody. Um, but again, I'm so grateful. How many of you know our God is intentional, amen? Come on, he's so good. Even this morning, you know, we had a couple come in and they just shared that last night in their Bible study that, um, you know, her husband, he was just praying and he'd grown up his whole life um, Catholic and, and just wanting to, basically as he's coming to know the Lord, wanting to get baptized, you know. And so last night he was saying, God, give me a sign. And this morning when I was driving, I felt like the Lord said, hey, we're going to do baptism next Sunday. So he was like, there's your sign. Amen. Come on. So... I say all that to say is, again, we all come from different walks of life in different places right now, and we're fighting different battles. But the one thing we always say, we don't wanna be people that just live by what we see or by how we feel. You know, but we wanna be people that live by what we know is true. And last time I checked, my God is still alive. He's still on the throne. He's still faithful, amen? So come on. Um, whatever you're fighting today, I just wanna encourage you, just worship through it, amen? And you'll see, you'll hear his voice. Amen? This sings out. Come on. We're going to raise a hallelujah. Amen? Come on. Let's say it to the world. Raise a hallelujah in the presence of Believe it over your lives. And 
heaven comes to fight for me. Amen. Come on. And I'm gonna sing in the middle of a storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar.
guys are really worshiping. Yeah, that's amazing. Amen? Come on. Come on. Again, we don't want to just hear about him. We want to know him. And we want to build our lives upon his word. Even like you're going to hear Carmelo's message today. Peter didn't walk on the water. He walked on the word. Amen? And that's the revelation that we as the church need to be in. We don't need to walk or be wavered by the storms in our lives because of what we see and how we feel. We need to be people who walk in boldness and confidence on His Word. Amen? Come on, that's good news. Amen? Come on.
again, thank you guys so much for your support, financial, for your giving for us. Again, we don't have to give, but we get to give. We don't have to worship, but we get to worship. And so, again, we're not going to go through much on that. If you want to give, you can give online on our app, on our website, or you can put it in the buckets in the back. But today, we want to celebrate Carmelo Hernandez. Amen? So can we, can, come up here, man. If we give him a heart, come on. You know some friend? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that'd be awesome, too. So... Brandy, you guys come up. Your family, your whole family, man. Yeah, you guys come up, man. Um, so you do wife immediate. It's up to you guys, yeah. Um, but again, so those of you guys that don't know, yeah, there's Vinny. He's big dog, man. Yeah. Too cool for school. You're up here, man. He's Hopefully he won't beat me in golf tomorrow. But um, for those of you guys that don't know, Carmelo um, is, is we're, we're ordaining him as our first pastor of the Bridge Central Coast, so I'm so excited for that. Um, and um, as, as youth pastor of our church, and every single Wednesday night, I mean, I've gotten to know this guy for now two, a little over two years, and man, it has been the greatest privilege of my life to not only pour into him, but just to see the God that's in him. And for us here, again, we believe, man, that God calls, amen? That we don't qualify. God qualifies those that he calls. And so, again, when I met him, God gave me a prophetic word for him that he's a giant slayer. And so I just spoke that over his life. I don't think he even knew it then. Um, and um, it has been nothing but a blessing to just watch him grow and to teach him how to study the word. And just, I mean, the dude is just fire on legs, amen? Um, he's so amazing and, 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 and literally carries the presence of God every time. I mean, he just, I, I don't have much to say. He's, he's, he's amazing, man. It's been, it, that's the joy of doing ministry is when you see calling and gold in people's lives that they don't see yet. And you're able to call that out and just see them blossom, become the people that God's called them to be. I know, I know God's called them to great things. And so our heart here at the bridge is not that we build castle. We don't want to just build big churches and have one guy speak in 52 weeks of the year. You know, our heart is that we um, get on our hands and knees and let the next generation of leaders stand on our back. And my prayer for us as a church is as we're faithful to serve the Lord, um, that the ceiling that we reach will be the floor for the next generation to run after Jesus. Amen. And so again, um, Pastor Fred, it was, uh, man, pillar of the faith on the Central Coast, and I think in the world. He's amazing, amazing father of our work, too. And so um, he's the one that saw Gold and Carmelo even before um, we came and made it the bridge. And so I just want to honor him as a father of that. And we're going to pray for Carmelo, bless him. And then um, in a second, um, those of you guys that want to come and lay hands on him, we're just going to pray and receive the gift that, that he is, amen, in our body. So I'm going to give this to Pastor Fred. Well, I don't know how many years ago it was when we first, you guys walked into the church. I'm going to cry. <laughs> you know, um, one of the things you want, in fact, what Jesus is looking for is fruit. And it's really his fruit. It's not our fruit. Now, he uses us. And uh, these guys just came at the right time. And we've just seen God's hand on their life in such a mighty, mighty way. Um, just you know, uh, just, I don't know anybody that's more into the Word and wants to grow and wants to learn and hungry for God. Hunger is the big thing. But if you're ever praying for anything, you ought to pray for hunger, that you'd be hungry for the things of God. And, uh, and we're going to lay hands on them. And uh, God, it's really, we're going to lay hands, but God's already laid his hands upon this family. I want to read this. I wrote this down yesterday, and I'm reading this to you guys and to the church and that is that as we lay hands on you today, six things are going to happen. Number one, we're going to recognize and acknowledge the Lord's calling on your lives as ministers of the gospel. Number two, we are commissioning you before the people of the Bridge Central Coast. Number three, we are releasing gifts and a new level of God's anointing on your lives, your whole, everyone, the whole family. Number four, we are separating you as servants and vessels for the Lord's work. Number five, we are joining ourselves, that we as ministers of the gospel are joining ourselves to you as fellow ministers in his church, which is God's house and his family. And number six, we're asking you, the people of the Bridge Central Coast, to receive Carmelo and Brandy and their family as gifts they are to the body of Christ and as servant leaders. 
We, uh, we don't do this lightly. This is not just a thing. This is not just a religious activity. We don't just do this lightly or flippantly, but in all sobriety and awareness of the importance and significance of what they are called and ordained to do. And uh, the verse God gave me for you is John 15, 16. You did not choose me. This is for all of you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you. This is Jesus talking. And I believe he's talking right now. And appointed you that you would go and bear fruit and that your fruit would remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give to you. And so we're going to lay hands on him and then however you want to do it, Pastor. So if you just, uh, we'll have you come up in a moment, but if you just stretch your hands toward this family, because, yeah, let's do that. It's not just Carmelo, but it's his entire family that is being separated. Remember when Aaron was made priest, so were his sons, and so it's the whole family. And so, Father, we thank you, and we do this. We recognize what you have already done. We see your hand upon this precious couple and this precious family, and Father, we are separating them unto you as vessels of gold unto God. And we pray, God, and release the power and the anointing and the grace and the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding that they will need in the days ahead. We thank you they're not alone, but we commit ourselves with them. We are ministers together of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, God, that the family of the... Of the um, the bridge, I almost said the city church, <laughs> of the bridge central coast now receives you as ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ and co-fellow leaders here in this body in Jesus' name. If you agree with that, shout amen. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Come on. As soon as I put my hand on you, again, in God's word it says that, um, Paul says, man, I wish you would all prophesy. And that's a word of encouragement over his life. And as soon as I put my hand on you, it's funny, I saw you carrying like a mound of people on your back through the mud, almost like a, a war scene. And I believe that that's a calling, that you have an evangelistic calling on your life and your family. I believe that God is gonna use you to pull people out of the mud. I've been saying that from day one, man. I believe that he's gonna pull you, um, use you to pull dead people to life. I believe that calls on your life. I believe that, again, the enemy, man, I feel like for so long has tried to make you doubt your identity and your calling, but I believe that you've gone through fire, that God has refined you, and it's not because of you. It's because of God's call and, and, and choice to choose you on your life. And so I just want to affirm that. And God, I do. God, I thank you for Carmelo. God, I speak over him the word you gave me from day one. God, that he's a giant slayer for this generation. God, that he's a David. God, to kill Goliath in this generation. God, and so right now, God, I ask Holy Spirit. God, pour out your fire upon him. God, a double portion. God, pour my mantle. God, Pastor Fred's mantle. Jesus, and the power of your spirit upon him. God, I pray. May he soar beyond us, God. May he do great and mighty things because your word says to those who have faith in me, you'll do even greater things than these. And so God, I thank you for his desire to serve you. I thank you for his passion, God, to love. God, I thank you for the call on his life, God, to pull dead people and to give them life through you, Jesus. And so I just pray, God, a new season of supernatural boldness and confidence. God, I affirm the calling on his life, God. I break any word curse is God or any strategy of the enemy to come and steal that away God we pray abundant favor boldness and the power of your spirit God to blow through him God and to touch and ignite a fire in the next generation God we bless him God we receive him as a treasure in this body God in this family God we lay our lives down God to lift up him and his family God and we just bless him right now in Jesus name amen come on yeah. Yeah. I just want to say this uh, to the family as well. When uh, I've just been reading in, yeah, I'm reading in Exodus and Leviticus. I don't, I'd recommend them. Anyhow, uh, and it's when they created the clothes that the high priest, when Aaron was going to become high priest, one of the pieces of the clothing that he was to wear when he went before the Lord was a turban, and there was a gold plate. 
and it said holiness unto the Lord or holy unto the Lord. And I really see that God's putting that over your family, that you are holy unto God. Good. No. Amen. Can we love on them? Amen. Make sure you give them big hugs outside, right? Don't give them a kiss, though. Brandy's got a pretty gnarly right hand, you know? Amen? So again, amen. We're good. Love you guys. Stoked, man. Come on. Yeah. Stay up here. This is all you. Amen? We're going to lay hands again, or extend your hands again. Receive the word. I'm stoked for what the message that God's given him. Amen? Come on. God, thank you again for Carmelo. God, I thank you, man, for... God, I just thank you for this brother from another mother, Jesus. God, I thank you. But the same Heavenly Father, right? Come on. God, I thank you for the call and anointing on his life. God, I thank you for his heart. God, his sensitive heart to serve you, Jesus. God, I thank you for his friendship, God. And God, I do. I would lay down my life for him and his family, God. And so again, I just bless them right now. God, we receive the word that you've placed on his heart, God, as it's from you. God, I pray, give him just boldness right now. God, let him breathe. God, let him just soak in, God, your love, God, as you touch him right now, God. So I thank you for him and the gift that you placed on his life, God. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Come on. Amen. Woo. Love you, buddy. Love. All right, guys, um, again, it's just so amazing. Just, I can't even fathom. Where, I mean, I talk a lot. You guys have been around me. I talk a lot. I mean, hopefully I can breathe up here while I'm trying to talk and stuff. But <laughs> just, I'm telling you of what the Lord's done in my life. Again, and I didn't get here on my own. You know, it, it's obviously the Lord who's brought me to this spot. And I give all honor and glory to God right now for giving me. If it wasn't for him, <laughs> seeing me at my lowest, darkest point again, what the Lord's done in my life, and I'm telling you, it's not just me. He could do it to every single one of you guys. I'm nothing, I'm nothing special, but I'm telling you, God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. Amen. And all of you guys are called. You guys are anointed. You're a chosen to preach the gospel, the good news. How do you guys know out there right now? There's nothing but darkness and but nothing but bad news out there. But I'm here today to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And then again, I'm just telling you, I just want to stop and again, this... Uh, I want to honor my, uh, my mom and my dad. You want to stand up, mom and dad, please? Woo. Give them a hand. Woo. I just want to say I love you guys, and uh, I know I wasn't the easiest son raising, but tell me what Jesus did in my life is real, and all I want to do is any way I can is just I got my worst ethic from you guys, and, I, and that's why I'm able to work hard in everything I do and be diligent. Same way I'm diligent to the Word of God. And I just want to thank you guys and honor you guys for you guys being the mother and father to me that God appointed to me. So I just want to honor you guys and say I love you. Amen. Woo. I do. I give my worst ethic. That, Worth ethic from my family. They work hard. We're hard workers. It's going to be kind of hard if you can outwork me. You know, it's not going to happen. I'm just going to let you guys know. <laughs> Telling you. Um, but uh, again, that's my natural life. But then again, there's so many people in my life, again, who the Lord brought into my life. I've been a believer now for only eight and a half years. I gave my life to the Lord when I was 30 years old. And again, I was just so lost and broken. But then again, how do we know, like, there's people in your life that the Lord brings into your life. And in that beginning where I was, there's so many people. I know they're not here, but hopefully they see it on this message. Is my first pastor. His, his name was Scott McGee. I want to honor him. I want to honor a guy that the Lord used to change my life. It was Bob Stiles. I honor that dude. That dude, the Lord used him. He always tells me, Carmelo, I don't have a testimony. I don't have a testimony. He's like, oh, I tell him all the time, Bob, what are you talking about? The Lord used you to change my life. What do you mean? Amen? So uh, him, and then also there's so many other brothers. And then again, <clears throat> here's what it's going to be. Uh, like I said, there's so many other leaders and stuff. But I want to honor, I'm telling you, is Pastor Fred. Pastor Fred, about three and a half years ago, the Lord spoke a message to, to call me into the ministry. So again, I want to honor Pastor Fred because he is the one, he is the one where, the re a big part of where I am in my spiritual walk is because of Pastor Fred. I could share a story where I remember where there was word curses spoken over me. And I walked into, I walked into a place where a word curse was spoken over me. And here's the thing. 
I received that word. I received it. And I was ready a believer. I wasn't in ministry yet. I was ready a believer. And I remember I, I, I told my wife, because I don't just tell anybody my issues of life. I just don't tell anybody, but I was crying. And I went home and I told Brandy of the word that was spoken over me. Hurtful words that broke me. And I went home and I curled up in my bed. And I just put the blankets over my head and I couldn't even couldn't even get up. I didn't want to get up. That night, there was a men's group at Dave Van Wee's house. There was a men's barbecue, and I always used to go and enjoy that time. I was just battling in there, battling, curled up like a little scared little boy, hurting and broken, crying because that word that was spoken over me. I didn't want to go to this men's group, so I ended up going to this men's barbecue. And the same thing, man, I haven't cried like this ever in my life. And I shared with the men the same thing. I shared what was happened to me, the word that was spoken over me, and other brothers, come on somebody, other brothers were coming over to me and they're praying over me and doing, just doing what we do, right? Come on somebody. But Pastor Fred, just like he's sitting there right now, I'm in tears. Picture this moment, I'm in tears. I'm broken. I am just alligator tears. I'm coming all around. Pastor Fred's sitting right there with a smile on his face and he's looking at me. And you know what he's saying? Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. I say it all the time. I wanted to get up and punch him in his face. <laughs> what do you mean, Pastor Fred? Aren't you seeing what's going on? Didn't you hear what they told me? Didn't you hear all this stuff? You know what he says? Carmelo, praise God. Watch what the Lord's going to do in your life. He's going to give you a deeper identity of who you are in Christ. So I'm telling you, he said, praise God. And that's why, come on, somebody, I received that word. I didn't know who I was serving the Lord, but I didn't know who I was in Christ. And now it's all about identity. If you know who you are with all these word curses, where anytime the devil wants to come against any single one of you, you guys would know the truth and the truth will set you free. But you've got to know who you are. That's why I said, Pastor Fred spoke that and brought it to my life. So I, I honor you, Pastor Fred. I mean, if, uh, the Lord used you majorly to, to mold me into the person I am, and I, I love you. I, Pastor Pam, Abby, their daughter, Barrington, Alec, I wanted to quit. I wanted to give up even a couple years ago. But Pastor Fred's daughter, Abby, said, when I wanted to quit, when I wanted to give up, I can't do it. I can't do it on alone. But Jesus sent Abby to me. Carmelo, a word spoken over me, Carmelo, he needs you. He needs you, Carmelo. I didn't see this. I didn't picture this. No way you can fathom a person like me being up here becoming a pastor. Are you crazy? Oh. <laughs> Blows my mind. But Jesus. But Jesus. Amen. And again, to go on. And then I truly believe I truly believe I gave the, my last message I gave was a few months ago. The Lord gave me a vision in 2019. And I needed, I, again, I needed to stop everything because it was so big. I truly believe with all my heart in December of 19, the Lord gave me a vision of a glimpse. He gave me a glimpse of truly what I'm walking in right now as we speak. Amen. Because it was so big and so huge, I could never, I could never write this up. I could never script this, but Jesus alone. And again, and here's what I'm getting into. I'm telling you, he said, hey. I brought a person in your life for such a time as this. I brought a person in your life. I'm going to connect you with him. And I'm going to use you guys to be on the front lines to preach the gospel of the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. And it's my pastor, Justin. I want to honor him, man. Can we give him a round of applause, please? I just want to say the same thing. He spoke the same thing over me the first time I shared my testimony of who I was. The first, and the word he gave me is, like, Carmelo, you're a giant slayer. He, from the beginning, Carmelo, you're a giant slayer. You're a giant slayer. When I didn't believe it, I couldn't see it. You're crazy. You're a giant slayer. You're a giant slayer. But how do you know? You got to know who's in your corner. You got to know who's in your side. You, everyone can say all they want. But when hell and high water comes, you better know who's in your corner. 
You better know who your brothers and sisters are in your corner, who's speaking into you, who's, who's not going to tell you, hey, go ahead and quit. Go ahead and keep doing that. Go ahead and compromise. Go, no, no, no. My pastor holds me accountable, and that's what we do here at the Bridge Central Coast. We hold each other accountable, and we do life together. We do not forsake of gathering. I'm telling you guys, if you guys... I'm telling you guys, if you guys go out there alone, that's what the enemy wants to do. Get you guys alone. Get you guys isolated. But I'm telling you, do not forsake of gathering. We need this. We need our brothers and sisters in this locking arms and encouraging and loving on one another. Amen? So I'm telling you, what Pastor Justin did in my life, he's a big part. I mean, I truly believe like I was good stock. There were some other things, but he called it out of me. I didn't even know it was in me, but he just called it out. So I just want to say I love you, Pastor Justin. Honor you. Honor Pastor. Yeah. Pastor Fred. I'm just thankful. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. Man, let's, just, let's jump into the word. Let's jump into the word. Hey, get into the word so the word could get into you. If you don't get into the word, the word's not going to get into you. Get in the word. So that's what we're going to do right now. And I'm telling you right now, I truly believe with all my heart, none of you guys are here by accident. You guys were ordained to be here today to hear this message. And it, let me just give you a passage of scripture really quick before I start. And it says, and we know, this is Romans 8, 28 through 30 says, and we know that in all things, how many things? In all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed into the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justifies, he also glorified. How do you guys know you guys are predestined? You were foreknew. God knew you from the beginning. I'm telling you guys, there's, you guys are not an accident. I'm telling you, you guys are supposed to be here today to hear this message. You guys are not an accident. Amen? And I truly believe today, I know it's Super Bowl Sunday. I know that. And I'm going to tell you right now, I truly believe what the Lord's going to do today. It's not going to be Super Bowl Sunday. It's going to be a super day in the spirit. Because today we're going to slay giants. We're going to slay giants. Amen? And in the title of the message, what I'm going to be delivering today is that the Lord is having me deliver. The title of the message is, He's Calling You. Tell your neighbor, He's Calling You. Look to your other neighbor, your second choice, and tell him, yes, you too. Hey, how do you know in church we got to laugh, guys? We got to have fun. Amen. All the darkness going on. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Come on. Amen. So uh, <clears throat> here we go. So turn with me in your Bibles to uh, Matthew 14, 22 to 33. <clears throat> Starting in verse 22 says, immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side. While he dismissed the crowd, after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there all alone. But the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. Verse 27. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sing, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshiped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you, Father God. Holy Spirit, I thank you, Father God, that this is not my message, Father God. This is your message, Father God, that you're having me deliver today to your people, Father God. And I thank you, Father God, when anyone hears this message, Father God, Holy Spirit, you just touch them, heal them, and deliver them, Father God, and set them free from any type of depression, oppression, anything that may be causing them to fix their eyes on you, Jesus. Father God, I just thank you, Father God, that even people that are here today, right now, Father God, by the time they walk out of this door, they're not going to leave the same, Father God, all because they encountered you, Jesus. So we just love and we praise and we give you all the honor. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen, amen. amen. <clears throat> so, again, 
started in verse 22, but I know I started in verse 22. Let me give you a context of a background of where we are before we get into this passage. So John, uh, Jesus just had news that uh, John the Baptist was just beheaded. He was just beheaded. John the Baptist is the one who baptized Jesus. Baptized Jesus and the Holy Spirit filled him. Okay, he baptized him. And then the Bible says that Jesus went out, withdrew by boat to a desolate place to be all alone. To be all alone. And it says the towns, the towns of all the people followed him on foot. Followed him on foot. Again, John the Baptist would just be headed. The one who baptized Jesus. Look at the character of Jesus. Never in there did I see retaliation. Let's go call James and John. Let's go and strike fire on them. No, that's for somebody today. Go to a desolate place and be alone. Okay, that's what Jesus did. And then that's when he went to a, de a desolate place. And this is where the miracle of the 5,000 happens. Okay, so there's 5,000 men there, right? Not including women and children. So then as soon as Jesus landed, the Bible says, as soon as Jesus landed, all he did, he had compassion on all the crowd and he healed all their sick. He healed all their sick. Again, all these people from all over the towns, how powerful, how amazing is it? From here, I know people are coming from Lompoc. I know people are coming from Solving. I know people are coming from Arroyo Grande, all over the areas. You know why? To hear the good news of Jesus Christ being pre preached in this place. Yes. Just like what they did. They walked. Same thing as they did. We're coming here, right? So, the John's, so now Jesus' disciples tells them, hey, all the disciples say, hey, Jesus, I know you did the miracles and all that was amazing, but hey, send these people away so they could go buy themselves something to eat. And Jesus tells them, no need to send them away. You give them something to eat. And they look and they say, Jesus, all we have is five loaves and two fish. Jesus says, bring it here to me. Bring it here to me. You don't have enough, my brothers and sisters. I'm going to tell you, we are not enough. But in his hands, he makes us enough. We are not enough. But then again, what did he say? He brought it in his hands. He, he gave thanks to his father. He, he broke it and gave thanks and he multiplied. And then he said, here, disciples, all disciples are, for you guys don't know, are followers of Christ. That's all it is. He gave to them saying, here, now you pass them out to the people, to all the 15,000 people. You feed them. You feed them. So he fed them. And then again, it says they had 12 basketfuls left over. 12 basketfuls left over. You know why? Because our God, we serve a God of super abundance Amen. and multiplication. That's the God that we serve. Amen? Amen? So that's where we pick up. That's a little background context that we pick up. And that's where we pick up in verse 22. It says, immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of them to the other side. While he dismissed the crowd, he had dismissed them. He went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there all alone. How powerful is this? Jesus just did a miracle. Jesus just did a miracle. And the first thing he did, the very first thing he did, he sent his disciples away and he says immediately, he sent them ahead of him to the other side. What did he go do? What's the very first thing he, Jesus went to go do? Pray. He went to go pray. The very first thing that we need to do as a people is pray. There's nothing outside of prayer that makes us stand here today. And I'm telling you again, and it's powerful. I know there's, I know we have prayer chains and, and it's amazing. When someone's coming with COVID or there's cancer or your marriage is, is in, the, you know, in a bad place or your children are acting crazy or whatever the case may be. Yes, yes, yes. But come on, Jesus just did a miracle. So excited that, thank you. He went to go, hey, get all you guys. How many of you guys wake up thankful? Thank you, Jesus. Like I said, I wake up every single morning, every single morning, and I say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, that he saved the rest like me. Thank you, Father, God, that I shouldn't be a pastor. Thank you, Father, God, I didn't know how to be a husband to my wife or a father to my children. I thank you, Father, God. You, how many of us do that? I, in the midst of everything, we always pray when things are going bad. But the very first thing, we need to pray all the time. What does it say in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, rejoice always. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Rejoice always. 
Walk around thankful. Carmelo, why do you walk around like that? You're always happy. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. That's why I walk like, because I pray and I'm in communion with him. What does it say? Rejoice always, people. Pray without ceasing, not just for one hour. Pray without ceasing. Every time you're walking, thank you, Father God. Soften their hearts to hear your word. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my children. Thank you for my job. Thank you for my car. Constantly praying, praying without ceasing. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Amen? Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation. How many situations? Every. every situation. By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. I'm telling you guys, there's power in prayer. And I'm telling you guys right now, I I'm from right here, and I'm telling you guys, we have prayer meetings in here every Tuesday. Every Tuesday from 12 to 1, and I want to personally invite you guys to come and join us here and pray. And if you guys can't do that, take that time. If you're at that lunch time or whatever the case, take that time to pray. Because nothing happens without prayer. We need to pray for our families right now. We need to pray for our children. We need to pray for the gang, that's, the gang stuff that's going on, the murdering, the suicide rate, the depression rate, the anxiety rate, our nation, everything. We need to pray. Nothing happens without prayer. So I'm telling you, there is power in prayer. We pray without ceasing. Amen? <clears throat> Let's continue. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side. While he dismissed the crowd, after he dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there all, all alone. Verse 24. But the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. How powerful is this? Jesus said, Jesus made, verse 22, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat ahead, uh, and go ahead of him to the other side. The disciples were now in a storm. The disciples were now in the middle of a storm. How many of you guys are in the middle, you guys could be in the middle of a storm right now in the middle of your life right now. Crisis is coming at you guys right now. But Jesus, but it says, but Jesus, during the fourth watch, he came to them. He came to him. He sees what you're doing. He sees what you're going through. Our God is omnipresent. He's everywhere all at the same time. He knows what you're going through. Amen. What does the word of God say? Jesus says in Matthew 6, in John 16, says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. In the, it's a promise. It is written. It's, it's a promise, guys. It's a promise that every single one of us are going to have hardships. We're going to have trials. But then again, take, what did Jesus say? Take heart. You guys may be in storms in your guys' life right now. Take heart. He sees you. I'm going to tell you, the enemy's probably going to say, you guys are all alone. You guys are all alone. Oh, you don't see what's going on in my marriage right now. You don't see what's going on in my children right now. You don't see what's going on in my finances right now. You don't see all this death and all these uh, word curses that's being spoken over me right now. You don't see it. Jesus sees it. Jesus sees it. He's everywhere all at the same time. He's here with us right now and he's there with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Don't allow the enemy to lie to you. Come on, somebody. Let's <clears throat> continue. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. Did you guys just hear that? During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking all on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said. What does that mean? His disciples, his followers of Christ, the ones he's always with through his ministry, always with them. Literally just seen the miracle being done for the 15,000 people. And yet, here comes Jesus walking on the water. And yet, they didn't recognize him. Could that be us? Could that be us in the middle of the storms that you guys are going through right now? When all hell's coming at you guys in the middle of the storm, but we come, we worship, we pray, we go to church, we tithe. We serve in ministries, but yet, when the storms of life come at you, you don't recognize Jesus? 
I say it all the time to the youth and I say it to everybody, when death knocks on your door. When death knocks on your door. You better know who you are, my brothers and sisters in Christ. You better know who you are. In the midst of crisis. In the midst of crisis. Thank you, beautiful. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. You got to breathe, right? Hey. In the midst of crisis, catch this. this is for some, in the midst of crisis, the Christ in you needs to respond. It must respond. It has to. I'm telling you, it's going to come at you guys all day long. It don't stop. The enemy's lurking. He's coming at you because the devil comes, my brother, to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus comes to give you life and life more abundantly. Amen. That's who we serve. That's who we know. But then again, don't know about him. It's not the Jesus that I know. But do you know him, my brother? Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus, the one who created heaven and earth? Do you know him? When we are discipling, me and Pastor Justin, we're asking people, how's your relationship with God? How's your intimacy with the Lord? What's the biggest thing the Lord's teaching you right now? Oh, uh, nothing. I know we know you're not spending time with Jesus. And if you don't know the word of God, the devil, like Pastor Justin says all the time, if you don't know what's written, the devil will tell you all day long. You got to know the word. So in the midst of crisis, the word responds. Amen. The Christ in you, which is the hope of glory. Needs to respond, my brothers and sisters. It must respond. <clears throat> During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the, when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. Verse 27. But Jesus. <laughs> but Jesus. I shouldn't be a pastor. But Jesus. I should be doing life in prison right now without the possibility of parole. But Jesus. I shouldn't be able to be raising my family today, but Jesus. Amen. All the hell that you've been going through, you guys shouldn't have made it. You guys have been standing here today, but Jesus. Some of you guys probably shouldn't have made it out of your guys' crib, but Jesus. Some of you guys shouldn't have made it through that abuse from a parent, but Jesus. Some of you guys probably been in here, you guys shouldn't have, all the pain and the hell that you guys been through, you guys shouldn't have made it, but Jesus. You're standing for a purpose and you're in here today for a reason. All because Jesus still has a plan and a purpose for every single one of you guys today. Amen. Nothing but Jesus. Amen. But Jesus immediately said to them. Who said? Jesus, Jesus said immediately, my brothers and sisters, immediately said, take courage. When I read this, it leaped in my spirit. I don't know who it's for today. These Three words from Jesus are for you guys. Take courage. Take courage. You guys are going through a lot right now. Maybe a death of a family member or finances are crazy or, or COVID's knocking at your guys' door. Cancer's knocking at the door. Take courage. Take courage. It is I. Not Carmelo. Jesus, it is I. Jesus is coming. He's saying, don't be afraid. Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Fear, I'm telling you right now. What, we see, what I see going on in the world right now, probably even within the church, people are afraid. Living in fear, being in chains. I was there. I know what that fear is. Fear will cripple you. Fear will not allow you to come out of your house. Fear will lock you in your rooms. Fear will put chains on you that aren't even there. Jesus says, don't be afraid. What does this say in Deuteronomy 31, 6 says, be strong, be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord, your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Don't be afraid, my brothers and sisters. Don't be afraid, fear not. Fear not. Don't be afraid. First, 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God, come on somebody, for who? For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power, but a power and love and a sound mind. Power filled by the Holy Spirit. Darkness comes in. I'm telling you, I walk in there, darkness has to go. 
because I am the light of the world. In the midst of darkness, you, they have, Jesus has to go. All these demons, all these devils trying to come against me. Come on, somebody, my Jesus is greater. Your Jesus is greater. Do you have that personal revelation who Jesus is in your life? Do you know him, my brothers and sisters? Do you know him? Do not be afraid, my brother. That's for somebody here today. Receive, receive the word. Don't be afraid. Take courage. Take courage. He's given you power from the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. Power from the Holy Spirit. Amen? <clears throat> Verse 27. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Verse 28. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Verse 29. Come, he said. Come, he said. Jesus says one word. Jesus says one word, come, come. Then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on the water and came towards Jesus. I'm going to tell you guys, my brothers and my sisters, one word, one word from the risen king, one word from your savior will save you and heal you and deliver you in Jesus' mighty name. One word, one word from the savior, redeemed, loved, forgiven, anointed, called, chosen, healed, delivered, saved. One word, one word. Do you know the word? One word. Jesus told Peter one word. Then Peter got down out of the boat. Come on, somebody. How many of us right now, sometime, some of us right now need to get down out of the boat and step out on faith for Jesus right now. Peter got down out of the boat and walked on water and came towards Jesus. He came towards Jesus. Just like how some of us are right now, we're walking. Some of you guys may be, be believers like longer than I've been alive, right? Or you guys are new believers. What is it saying? Peter walked towards Jesus. Walked towards Jesus. Walked towards Jesus. Walked towards Jesus. Walk toward Jesus. But then something happens here. But when he saw, but when he saw the winds, when he saw the waves, when he saw the storms, he began to sink. And he said, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Jesus, come on, somebody. Jesus says, come. Lord, if it's you, call me to come to you on the water. Come. One word, come. Peter got down on the water and walked on it. Peter did not walk on the word. Peter did not walk on the water he walked on the word. If you, any of you guys are ever going to walk on water, call me. I want to see it. You got, hey, it might be cool. If you guys are going to do it, do it. But I'm going to tell you what you can walk on. You can walk on God's word. Walk on the word, my brothers and my sisters. <clears throat> Isaiah 40 and verse 8 says, The grass withers. The, fa the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. Yeah. Come on. Matthew 24, 35. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. In the John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Matthew 4, 4. It is written. It is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Amen. you got to be in your word so you can know the, the schemes of the enemy. But I'm telling you, Jesus called Peter. One word, my brothers and sisters, will change your guys' life. I'm telling you today, right now, in an instant, he got down and walked on water. But he didn't walk on water. He walked on the word. Yeah. Every, we got to be a people. we got to be a church. Again, and it says, let's continue on. But there's something that happened here. Something was happening. He was walking towards Jesus. Just like some of you guys may be in here in ministry, in worship teams, whatever the case, being believers. But something happened here. When they saw the winds and the waves, he began to sink. What does that mean? Took our eyes off Jesus. He took, our, he took his eyes off Jesus and he began to sink. You know what the opposite of faith is? It's not unbelief and it's not fear. 
its sight. Second Corinthians 5, 7 says, for we walk by faith. We walk by what? Faith. And not by sight. What happened? Peter was walking to the word, on the word, but something happened. He saw. He saw the storms and he saw the waves and he seen everything crashing. You guys may be in here today and you're being like, Carmelo, if you would even know of the storms and the hell that I'm facing right now, there's no way I could keep my eyes on Jesus. There's no way, but I'm telling you right now, keep your eyes focused on Jesus. And I'm telling you, he will get you through the storm, Amen. through it. And he will be with you in the middle of your storm. Just like we see in the middle of the storm, Jesus is there with you. Walk by faith, not by sight. We want to see everything. Oh, before I go, I got to make sure I got to see everything's good. I got to see my prayer was answered. That is the opposite of faith. We walk by faith. The thing's unseen. That's what we walk by. We got to know what's in the word of God. But if you don't know what's in the word of God, dude, I'm going to tell you, you guys, it's going to be hard for you guys not to live in, in fear. I'm going to be honest with you guys. You have to be in the word. You have to be in the word. Get in your guys' word. Walk by faith. What are you guys checking out there? What are you guys watching? What are you guys fixing your eyes on right now? Are you guys fixing your, your eyes on all the death rate that's going on in the world right now? Are you, are you focusing on, on that bad report that came from a doctor right now? What are you fixing your eyes on? Are you focusing on that right now? Is there some storms going on in your marriage? Are you focusing on that right now? Yes, storms are in this world, my brothers and sisters. You will have trouble, but take cheer. Jesus, I am with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. What are you watching? What are you checking? Keep your eyes focused on Jesus, and I guarantee you, he will comfort you. Jesus is the comforter. Amen? Amen. I'm telling you guys, you guys got to keep your eyes focused on Jesus. <clears throat> Verse 30. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sing, cried out, Lord, save me. Verse 32. And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then, then those who were in the boat worshiped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. I'm going to tell you guys right now. Some of you guys may be in here crippled by fear of all what's going on. Crippled by fear, just like, like, just like Peter said, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Jesus, immediately. Not I'm going to let you stay. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand. Immediately, reached out his hand and grabbed them. Let me tell every single one of you, my brothers and my sisters, Jesus' hand is not too short where he cannot reach you wherever you are right now. He could reach you right now in the middle of your storm. He could reach you. Getting ready to close here. And when they climbed into the boat, the wind stopped. Then those were who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. Have you had that truly you are the son of God moment? I know I have. You're not talking me out of Jesus saying, real, good luck. <laughs> it's not happening. I've had that revelation. Have you guys, my brothers and sisters, had that true re revelation that, that you could say, truly, you are the son of God. You know what's so powerful about this scripture? You know what's so powerful about it, my brothers and sisters? Jesus comes walking on the water. Peter said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come. Peter got down out of the water and walked on it. Did you notice? Did you guys notice that Jesus did not say, hold on. Let me, let me make sure there's no waves, make sure there's no storms, make sure there's no nothing. Jesus did not stop the storm. He called them right in the middle of it. Jesus called them right in the middle of the storm. He didn't say, oh, peace be still, because the storm has nothing on Jesus. He's calling you right now, wherever you are right now, he's calling you in the middle of the storm that you're on right now. And I truly believe what the Lord had me deliver today. He's, he told me, Carmelo, tell them, the title of my message, and I'm telling every single one of you guys, he's calling you. Amen. He's calling you. He's calling you. One word he says to Peter, and he's telling you guys right now, come, come. In Matthew 11, 28 to 30 says, 
Come to me. Oh, receive this. Receive his written word. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. He will give you rest. We've been seeing so much as us ministering to people that so many people are just running ragged out there. We need to rest in him. Jesus said, I will give you rest. I will give you peace. So again, right now, this is why I'm here giving this message today. If it's you guys in here right now and you're in the middle of a storm right now and you believe you're like, man, you don't even know what I'm dealing with right now. And I'm telling you right now, my brothers and sisters, he's calling you. He's calling you. He's calling you and he's saying, come. Everybody, can you please just close your eyes and bow your heads. If that's in he, you in here today and you've been battling storms, you've been going through a lot of stuff in your life, I'm telling you, Jesus is calling you. Some of you guys probably haven't even had a relationship with Jesus. I want to introduce them to here to you today. And some of you guys probably been in ministry or a believer for many years, but you guys are in a season right now where you probably fell away from the Lord. You're like, man, I used to be like Carmelo preaching like fire out there or whatever the case may be. I used to be like that dude, but I lost it. I took my eyes off Jesus. I'm telling you, he's calling you. He's calling you back into the ministry. Wherever you're at, he's calling you. He's calling you and he's saying one word, come, come. If that's, any, if that's you in here today and you're feeling that you want to come, it's not me that's calling you. Jesus is calling you. He gave me this message to deliver to every single one of you guys here today. He's calling you. He's calling you. And if that's you, I want you to be bold. Eyes closed, no looking around. Put your hands up if that's you. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise. Keep those hands up. There's no shame in here. Put your hands up. Put them up. Amen. Amen. Just like Peter. Come on, somebody. Just like Peter. What did Peter do? He took a step. He stepped out on faith. So every single one of you guys that have your hands up, I want you to be bold. I want you to take a step, and I want you to come up here right now. Thank you, Jesus. Everyone with their hands up, come on up. Thank you, Father God. Jesus, my name. Jesus, my name. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Holy Spirit, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Holy Spirit, thank you, Father God. Jesus, my name. Thank you, Jesus, my name. Holy Spirit, thank you, Father God. Holy Spirit, thank you, Father God. Jesus, my name. Thank you, Father God. Everybody, if you could just stand, please. Everyone else? Everybody just has a posture to receive what the Lord wants to do today. Put your hands out like this. And repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you sent your son, Jesus, and he paid the cost and the price for all my sins of what I deserve. So right now, Jesus, I ask you to come into my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and lead me all the days of my life. Use me to be your hands and feet to this dark and broken world. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to pray for you guys. Father God, I just thank you, Father God, Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father God, for every person that decided yes to Jesus, Father God, or they're coming back to you, Father God, right now, Father God. Holy Spirit, it's not an accident what you did today, Father God. Holy Spirit, I thank you, Father God. You fill them with your Holy Spirit and your presence, Father God. Holy Spirit and fire, Father God. Let it rain, Father God. Let it rain on them right now, Father God. Open up the windows of heaven, Father God, and let it rain, Father God. I just thank you, Father God, that the testimonies that they're going to be, Father God, they're going to be fire starters, Father God, in this city, in this state, and in this country, Father God, all for you, Jesus, Father God. So I just love 
love and I praise you, Father God. I thank you, Father God. Let revival start in this place, Father God. Let us go out there, Father God, and be the light in the midst of darkness, Father God. Let us be the truth, Father God, that sets every captive out there free, Father God. I thank you, Father God. Use us here, Father God, at the bridge, Central Coast, to be your front runners, Father God, on the front lines. We're not on the sidelines, Father God. We're on the front lines declaring the good news of Jesus Christ. So we love and we praise you. And if we receive that, give me a shout of amen. 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 Oh, man. Again, we love you guys. So glad that you're here today. Um, those of you guys that made a declaration and profession of faith this morning, we just want to encourage you guys. Um, next Sunday, we are going to do baptisms after church. So again, if you want to be baptized, there's a table outside. Sign up your name. Um, we're going we're gonna to blow the house down next week. Amen? Um, how many of you guys believe God's alive? Come on. Amen? Cool. We love you guys. Thank you so much for coming. If you need prayer, feel free to come forward. We'd love to pray over you and just minister to you. But again, we will be here same time, next, same place next week. Amen? Come on. Love you guys. Have a good day. Justice rule on